Welcome to Working with Time in Interactive Systems. Touch Designer gives you a lot of freedom for how you might use and think about time, so let's explore a few different concepts that will help us to get started. To begin, let's add a timer chop here into our network. Now, the timer chop is uh, one of the most powerful operators we can use for thinking about time here inside of Touch Designer. And in fact, it has a number of channels already included for us as we start to think about how we might interact with it. We have a timer fraction channel, which is a zero to one representation of the elapsed time for our timer, a ready and done channel will help us understand the state of our timer chop. Let's go ahead and say, turn this down to two seconds. And if we start our timer, we'll see that our timer fraction runs over that time, zero to one, and we see ready and done change. Now, if we initialize our timer, we'll see that we are in a ready state. And when our timer completes, we'll see that we are in a done state. What if we want to understand if the timer is running? Well, in fact, if we head over to the outputs page, we'll see that we can turn on an additional channel for running. So here we have a better way to understand, is the timer ready? Is it running or has it completed? Let's go ahead and take a moment to actually build a better representation of this. And we might use this kind of idea in any number of applications that we might build or experiences that we might build with Touch Designer. Let's grab a select chop here. And what we'll do is we'll isolate just those three channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab channel names. I want ready, I want running, and I wanna grab done. Now, next what I'd like to do is I'd like to collapse these three channels. I'd like to collapse them into say, just a single channel. In this case, we'll add a fan chop here into our network. And in our fan chop, rather than fan out, let's select fan in. And this will now go ahead and combine our three input channels into just one output channel. Now, I happen to find this ready name is a little bit distracting. So let's add a rename chop here into our network. And here we can rename this channel to something maybe like timer state. What we should better see now is that if we go ahead and initialize our timer, we'll see that we are in zero. We are in the zeroth index of our state. If we start our timer, we'll see that we're running, we're in the first index, and when our timer completes, we're in the second index. Why is this valuable for, to us? Well, let's connect this to a null, and we can see a simple example of this just by looking at some textures. So let's add a text top here into our network, and this text top we might call standby. Let's go ahead and add another one, and we can give this a text display called running, and let's add a third, and this one we can call done. Let's use a switch top. Let's combine all three of these text tops uh, with our switch top. And let's go ahead and take our null one chop, make it viewer active with the A key or the viewer active flag. Grab the channel we'd like to use, drag that on top of our switch top, drag that right over to the parameter we'd like to target. We can release our mouse button and then we can set a chop reference. Now what we should see is that as our timer runs, if we initialize it, we can see that we're in standby. When we start our timer, we'll see that it's running. And when the timer completes, we'll see that it has finished. Now, this is useful for many different kinds of contexts, but especially if we need to track what's happening in an installation or experience that we've built that's framed by some amount of time. Let's take a look at another application for the timer chop. So let's add another timer here into our network. And let's think for a moment about this idea of cycle. So we have this cycle parameter here on our timer chop and how we might we use this. Well, let's connect a null chop here into our network and let's go ahead and build something simple as a way to visualize this. So I'm going to begin by adding another text top here into our network. And in this text top, I'm going to add some simple text like hello world. I'm going to go ahead on the common page. I'm going to turn this resolution up to say 1280 by 720. And I think I want to turn uh, our font uh, maybe up to something closer to 100. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to treat this almost like a scroll. I'd like to treat this like a ticker. I'd like hello world to run off the right side and come back around to the left side. Let's use a transform top to achieve that. Let's go ahead and make our null two viewer active with the A key or the viewer active flag. We're going to grab the channel that we want to use. I'm going to hold down the mouse button, drag over to the top that I want to target, head over to the parameter I want to target, and then release the mouse button and select chop reference to go ahead and get a chop reference that's right here on our TX parameter. On our timer uh, chop here, I'm going to turn down the duration to say just five seconds, and let's start our timer. And we'll see that over the course of five seconds, our text runs off the right side of our top and seems to disappear. Well, we can make one change that will help better get the behavior that we're after. So on our transform top, on the tile page, 
Let's head over to the extend parameter and set this to repeat. Now let's go ahead and initialize our timer and let's start it one more time. We'll now see that our text flows off the right side and comes back on the left side, ending here in the center. Now this is an excellent place for us to start, but what I might want is I might want this to run for some number of cycles. And that's where we can use this cycle parameter. Now I'm gonna turn down the length to say just two seconds so we can see this a little bit faster and turn on the cycle parameter. Now by default, we have a fixed number of cycles. So we have a maximum number of four. And what we should see now when we start our timer is that we'll run this animation four times. And on the end of our fourth cycle, we'll end here in the center of our transform top. Now, this is excellent. In some cases, we have a fixed animation that we want to have run, and we only want it to cycle for a fixed number of times. And this is an excellent use case for those situations. There are, however, times when maybe I want this to run more like a ticker, and I want this to run perpetually. So I don't want it to stop until I actually trigger a stop here inside of my network. Well, let's take a look at how we, we might do that. We can turn off the cycle limit. And now when we start our timer, we'll see that our animation will run uh, off the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, in the cycle perpetually. It won't stop until we intervene. And we could intervene in a number of different ways. If we wanted to just snap right to the end of the animation, we could use this go to done parameter. And that will stop us immediately. And wherever we are in the animation, in fact, we start it again, we'll see no matter where we are, it will snap right to the center. Now, that's excellent for some cases, um, but I might want my cycle to complete at the end of the animation. So in that case, let's go ahead and see how we might achieve that particular end goal. With our animation cycling, let's now use the parameter exit segment at end of cycle. This will complete the segment that we're in and then and our animation. Now this is excellent because this gives us a way to have some kind of loading animation or cycling animation that we can then complete or have it go to the end portion of a cycle. How might we think about interacting with this? Well, let's go ahead and add a button component here into our network. We'll use our first button to be our start and I'm gonna go ahead and label this start. I'm gonna also change this to be a momentary button because I want to treat this just as a momentary action. I'm gonna grab the output of our button component and I'm gonna go ahead and connect that to not the first input, but the second input, which is the start trigger for our timer. We'll see now that when we start this, this is a great way for us to begin the animation. We've started our timer with our button. How then can we go ahead and click on this exit segment at end of cycle? Well, we can do that a few different ways. One way that, way that we might do that is we might go ahead and add another button component. And with our button component, if we wanted to have a user interface element that did this, and we could call this exit cycle, and let's go ahead and make this momentary, we might go ahead and think about how we could grab this value, this parameter, drag it on over to our timer chop and drop that right on exit segment and set up a reference. This is one way that we can kind of create this behavior. So here we'll see if we make our button viewer active, we can start our animation, our animation will continue to run and we can use our exit cycle button as a way to end this animation. Now, this is an excellent way for us to solve this problem if we're only working with user interfaces or some interface that we've built. But in many circumstances, we might have some callback, we might have some event that we wanna to use to trigger this. So let's go ahead and remove this expression for a moment. And let's use, in this case, a parameter execute chop, or excuse me, a parameter execute dat. Now, what we'll see here with a parameter execute dat is we can go ahead and grab our uh, button two, and we're gonna set that over here in the operator that we wanna watch. We wanna watch, in this case, the parameter called value zero. So we'll go ahead and put in here value zero, and we'll write a simple Python a uh, one-liner here. So here on value change, I suppose this is a two-liner. So if par.eval, and this will check to make sure that our par is uh, only when it's true. So if par.eval colon, and now we'll go ahead and target that parameter. So our operator, let's take a look here. So this is timer two. Our operator named timer two, and quotes close parentheses dot par, the parameter that we want to target. We can see here the parameter name is exit end cycle. So par.exit and cycle dot pulse and the pulse method is a way that we can simulate just clicking right here on our pulse parameter so now what we should have 
is we should see that when we start our animation, we can also use our button here that is using a parameter execute dat as another way of ending this animation. Now, this is a particularly useful uh, shortcut to know or a particularly useful technique to understand if you're working with callbacks or other events that are happening inside of Touch Designer that you might want to use as a way of triggering this end cycling animation. There are many, many more things we can do with the timer chop, and this is just a beginning way for us to start to think about how we can interact with the many options that we have.